Hi guys, my name is Charles and you are watching Charles Salbox TV. So in today's video, what we are going to be focusing on is a few footwork drills to help you develop a sound and solid foundation for your movement. Now this will cultivate a good base for you to move forward so that when you are throwing punches, you're confident that you have a solid foundation and you are balanced and well coordinated. Right, let's get straight into it. Okay guys, so the first set of drills that I'm going to introduce you to are your movement drills. Now, with our movement, we want to understand that the plane of the ring sets up two dimensions. So going forwards and backwards and then left and right. And we have to be able to traverse the contour of the ring, bearing in mind the ropes and the center, obviously the real estate of the ring, and then also our opponents, so more tactical movements. In order to do this, we need to be able to work moving forwards, backwards, left and right lateral movement, and then also circular movement. So we have those three types of directions and vectors that we convey within the ring, but we also have three different types of movement. So the first one is our step movement, and I'm going to demonstrate that. So the first thing that we want to do is get into our boxing stance. Now our boxing stance, just to describe what's happening, obviously if we have our front foot, um, our lead foot, that should, be, that should coincide with our lead hand. Now if you're right-handed, you typically want to have your left hand forward so that you can deliver a more stronger punch with your right hand. I'm right-handed, so I have my left foot forward and my left hand forward. Now what I do with my front foot, I turn it out to the side slightly, the heel goes out to the side, and with the toe, I align my heel on the back foot, okay? So you can see the distance there, I'll show you, is approximately one and a half feet, going backwards to about, say, two feet, okay? So we have that bit of distance between our feet. Obviously slightly wider than waist width apart, going this way. And then what we want to do after that is raise the heel on the back foot. So we raise the heel, okay? And that leaves our trailing leg bent. Straight after that, what we want to do is then bring our weight back. So we want to shift our hip towards the back foot, okay? Now, obviously, we want to make an adjustment with this knee here, so we keep it loose, okay? So this is our general base for our boxing stance. Now, with respect to the hands, what we do, we keep our right hand close to our face. That deals with more defensive responsibilities and our elbow towards the torso, okay? So this right hand is pretty much locked in to the torso, and it's obviously um, having the responsibility more so for defense. Now our lead hand has a bit more freedom, so we want to leave our lead hand out here, and we use this soft fist um, that we've curled up just to give ourselves a bit of distance measurement with our opponent. So this has the responsibility for attack and defense. But this is basically our stance, okay? So the first thing that we want to do is now go into our step movement from this basic stance. So our frontal movement is just going to be leading with our front foot. We step and then we move the back foot. So basically with our movement in the step movement, we extend our lead foot takes up the space and then we bring our body with the back foot. So again, okay, going backwards now, the reverse happens. We extend with the back foot, drop our weight back and then we bring the front foot back. Okay, I'll demonstrate that from the side so you can see Again, my frontal movement from the side. So you can see I extend and then move my body. So it's more safe to do this. So we extend, we don't know if we can actually occupy this space. When we see that we can, then we bring our movement forwards with the back foot and the, and the body. So again, 
Okay, moving backwards, our opponent is normally not going to be behind us. It's probably going to be in front of us, hopefully. So what we do, we can move our weight with the back foot. Okay, so the weight of our body goes backwards. Okay, so now from the side, moving in the lateral direction, what we want to do is the same thing with our lead foot into the left direction, our left foot into the left direction, our right foot into the right direction. So I move here. And we want to preserve the stance as we go. You can see that this is a bit more safe and a lot slower, okay, than the next few types of movement that we're gonna have. So I'm going to demonstrate this moving towards the camera from the side. Okay, and to the, away from the camera. Now, the last plane of movement is the circle. So we want to move in the circular direction now. So what we do, we angle our foot and then we bring our back foot towards the stance, the new stance position. Okay, and you can see that as I'm moving in this direction, this helps me when I'm moving against a southpaw opponent. Okay, now I want to go in the other direction, move into the right. So I need to bring my right foot to where I want to be in stance with respect to the back foot and then adjust my front foot. So I bring the weight to the back foot and then I adjust with the front foot. Now, obviously, as this will probably be your first time doing this, you want to understand that moving to the right will be slightly more uncomfortable than moving to the left, okay? But in order to remove this discomfort, you need to drill it time and time again. I've showed you the, the first step movement um, in all three planes, and now I'm going to move on to the push and movement. So this is where we actually propel ourselves forward slightly um, with the back foot. So the back foot moving forwards is what we're going to use. So the frontal plane in the stance, going backwards now, we used our front foot. So we want to propel ourselves using the front foot going backwards, okay? Okay, from the side now, going forwards, going backwards, okay, remembering to keep the weight on that back foot, okay, it's very important for that, and now, when we're going um, to the side, we do the same thing. Going to the side, we use our right foot to propel ourselves in this direction. Propel myself with the um, left foot. Okay, you want to make sure that you're taking small steps just so that the movement is a bit more controlled and you can fine tune and adjust where you're going, the direction you're going, if you encounter something um, problematic on that way. If you take a big step, then if your opponent notices your movement, you won't be able to adjust. So small commitment in any given direction. Okay, from the side. To the left, away from the camera. With my right foot now. Okay, now I'm going to be showing you how to do the push movement, circling your opponent. So this is really quick movement, and this will definitely help you, the push style movement, 
and when you begin fainting, which will be the next section that we, I touch on with you guys. So here, circling. So I use my eyes across my hand to understand where the center will be, okay? My hands are always directing to the center. And I push with the trailing leg, propel my body in the direction that I need to go, okay? So our next mode of movement is the pendulum movement. So what we want to do here is understand that the pendulum is like a back and forwards movement. So this type of movement will create the uncertainty within the measurement that our opponent makes of our displacement. And this will then deter them from throwing their punches. So it's a way to you know, really confuse our opponent. On the spot, what the pendulum movement looks like is a backwards forwards movement like this. Now, this is how we are in the stationary movement. So when we're moving from the pendulum, what we do, we take a small gallop, okay? But we move the front foot first and then the back leg trails. Now, when we're going backwards, we move the back leg first and the back and the front leg trails. So obviously in the front of plane, moving in this direction, again, with the front from our stance and then moving backwards. Okay, so that is generally what we're looking for when we are moving in the pendulum. Now from the side, what we want to do also is have the lateral movement. So we move the right leg first, moving into the right direction and the left, left leg first, moving into the left direction from the side and then towards the camera, away from the camera again. Okay, so that is how we would move in the lateral plane. So now moving on to the circular plane, we're circling our opponent. Of course, we use our hands to designate where the center of the ring is or our opponent and that would help us against a southpaw um, opponent. This would help us in the right direction against an orthodox opponent because we're moving to their blind side. Okay, so here. Okay, have that flow of movement. Be really fluid when you're practicing this. Try not to be too stiff. Try to let the joints be slightly elastic so that you're not being rigid and you're not telegraphing any movement. Obviously, the more smooth the movement is, the more easier for you to make that transition of attack from this type of movement. If you're rigid, you're more likely to telegraph, okay? So that's our movement drills. We want to try to perform each type of drill for about a minute. So obviously you've got nine specific types of movement there. You've got all the different types of movement with the three different planes. Again, you want to move in all the different planes for about a minute. Now the next set of drills that we're moving on to are the faint drills. So with the faint drills, what we're doing, we're pretending to attack, okay? And then that gives us information about what our opponent's response would be. Do they back off? Do they stand their ground? Do they try to attack and be aggressive whilst you're attacking? Are there certain particular um, disturbances within their defense that they enable for you to then attack at those locations? There's all different reasons why you will faint, but I'm just gonna focus on that technical aspect of fainting. What you're going to do is actually push with your back foot to get a faster faint, or just step with your front foot to get a slower faint. So if you step, that might just be a feint to step into the position or a feint to attack, okay? There, okay? Now, what that does is show our opponent that we're trying to advance forward, okay? So we might feint and then come back, okay? 
faint, then come back. This is solely with the feet, okay? So what we might do is add a bit more force to the faint, I propel our body into the faint as opposed to just the extension of the front foot and then we use the back leg so boom like that okay boom like that and then we give more of an impression that we're trying to attack so from the front frontal plane just like that okay just an extension with the foot okay there now if I propel with the back foot okay there there okay those are the feints that you use for a point or tip feint okay that's literally just using the tip or point of um, your front foot to come forwards and then go backwards this sets up unique counter attack opportunities that you want to take advantage of moving on to the second type of feint is when we actually move forwards Okay, so we propel our body forwards, not just the front foot. So here, from the side, boom, okay, just there, boom, okay. Now, it's similar to the push step that we do when we're generally moving. Now, the push step is pretty much the faint step when you move forward, and it is actually the same step that you move forwards when you throw a jab, okay. When you throw a jab, you extend like that, but it is the push from the back foot. The back foot is responsible for so much in boxing, okay? The front foot is quite lazy in terms of, it gives your location within the ring, um, but it doesn't really do too much except for giving you balance and you know stability. But the back foot is responsible for most of the punches. So moving forwards, we'll do two feints, okay? Boom, boom, ba. okay? So those two feints there are kind of like two half steps. And then when we come back, we come back with one full step. So we land in the original position. So ba, 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 okay? Ba, 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 okay? Now moving forwards here, so you can see the same um, action being performed. Ba, 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 ba. With these particular feints, we would incorporate them within our movement okay so what we would do maybe take a step to the side ba faint take a step to the side faint this is all to enhance our shadow boxing so we will bring all of these moves together so that you can see how they work for you to have a good base in terms of traversing the ring and showing your confidence to your opponent not only just being confident but showing your confidence in your technical ability. The two drills that I'm going to introduce you to now are the pivot drills. Now they're going to be two 90 degree pivot drills, but one is going to be on the front foot and one is going to be on the back foot. So the reason why we use pivots is to change angle and also position. When using the pivot on the front foot is simply just to change angle. And when using the pivot on the back foot, is to change our position and angle. On the back foot, we have the weight and we're going to pivot on the front foot. Again, in the boxing stance, what I do is lift the front heel like this and then I push with my back foot, but I use my hands as a good focal point to where I want to stop. So I want my hand to slightly move in front of my, the angle that I sweep through there and it enables me to stop in the location where I want to in terms of my stance facing my opponent. Now moving in the other direction back towards the camera I lift my front heel and then I push with my back foot and then I sweep through the angle so that I can face the camera there okay now I should be in stance as I am the front foot and the back foot work together to form the pivot. Obviously, you generate a pivot point on the foot by lifting the heel and then the force to turn through the angle off the back foot. Use your hands also to guide you through the angle that you sweep and then prompt you to stop when you reach the particular position with your fist and your eye line with that reference point. Now, the back foot pivot, what we're doing we're moving 
as the pivot on the back foot, so we push with the front foot. Now, with the back foot pivot, our back foot is already in the point or tip position. So what we do, we use our hands again, and we push with the, the front foot. There, okay? We follow our opponent along this movement. Now, we push with the front foot and pivot on the back foot to come back towards the camera. Again, using the hands as the reference point. There. Okay, now we want to go to the side. So we go with the same movement, push um, with the front foot to go to the side, use our hands again for the reference point there. Now we do the same thing going back to um, the camera there. So those are the two pivots that we can drill within the ring when we're performing our shadow boxing. So now I'm going to demonstrate how you can bring all those particular moves and drills together in a shadow boxing segment lasting up to about say one to two minutes. So we've got one to two minutes on the clock. So the first thing that I want to do is meet my opponent in the ring. So I take the pendulum step, guide me to the ring. Now I see that my opponent is quite aggressive. So I start to circle to his blind side. It's an orthodox opponent. So I start to circle, but now he tries to press me. So I'm pushing with my push step. Then I go into more of a pendulum step, okay? Then again, in pendulum movement. Then I move forwards towards the center of the ring. I want to hold the center of the ring. So I edge forward, then I push forward. Then I start to pivot because I think my opponent is trying to attack. So I want to change the angle. Now I move towards my opponent. I want to be slightly more aggressive, so I'm fainting. And then my opponent's on the ropes. Okay, now I'm trying to cut off the corners. Okay, my opponent tries to move across quickly, so I do a back foot pivot, cuts off the ring here. Then my opponent obviously wants to use his movement along the rope so he can get towards the center, but I'm not letting him. So now I cut off the ropes there just by stepping to the side, cut off the ropes there. He tries to be evasive. I then perform another back foot pivot. Then he tries to be evasive again. Then I cut off the ring here. Now he tries to be a, a lot more aggressive, so I'm stepping back. Then I pivot, pivot again, pivot again, step back, step forward, feints again. Okay, then I'm pendulum. Okay, perform the pendulum, then a pivot. Then I'm moving forwards again, pivot. Moving forwards, then backwards. Okay. Then I'm stepping backwards. I'm trying to just identify the correct distance from where I can stay just at range. Cutting off to the side. He's trying to use a bit more agile movement. So I'm having to pivot and then cut off the ring because I'm trying to be aggressive again. Okay, now I'm obviously edging. Then I'm pushing, trying to occupy specific positions myself very quickly. Okay, so guys, that is a demonstration of how you can use all of these drills to bring your own version of a round in boxing. Obviously it's your version because you're visualizing everything, but you are making yourself accountable to what you visualize. It's a good shadow boxing routine that you can do. It's definitely something that I would advise, you know, consistent drilling with the individual drills. And then if you can, bring them together so that they're more fluid and more packaged for your specific opponent. Okay guys, so we've come to the end of the video now. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. Within this particular type of video, it's all about bringing together some drills so that you can combine them enhance your shadow boxing and then move forward with a better foundation for your fundamentals. Now all of these types of movements that I've brought in today are generally considered fundamental for movement. So you would need to practice this time in and time again. Guys, so it's gonna cost you nothing, but if you've enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and share it to anyone you feel may benefit from watching it as well. If you have any comments or suggestions about videos that you would like me to make, please leave them within the comment section. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay informed of any new videos that I'm uploading to the channel. Okay guys, until my next video, take care, stay blessed, keep training, 
and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.